Okay, the last part to chapter 3 is identifying bonding types in chemical compounds. This is exercise 3K, page 6, 60 through 64. The key things to remember, of course, are that ionic bonding has ions form when electrons are transferred, and covalent bonding, we talked about this in class, and it's also in your book, that electrons are shared between the bonding atoms. There's a simple formula for being able to decide what kind of bonding is actually going on. And that goes like this. Metal plus metal makes a mixture, which means no bonding. All we're doing is mixing them together. Metal plus non-metal makes ionic bonding, which means charges are involved due to ions. And then number three, non-metal plus non-metal makes covalent bonding, where you have sharing of electrons. Now, how do you tell what a metal versus a non-metal? It's all about the periodic table, and in particular, let's get lined up, this part. Okay, if you're looking at this part, this is the line that separates the metals from the non-metals, and it should be clear based on the names of things like iron and nickel and copper and zinc and uh, even tin and lead, tungsten, chromium, you know that these are all metals on this side. And things like oxygen and nitrogen and fluorine and chlorine and sulfur and argon and neon and helium. These are all non-metals. So these are the metals, these are the non-metals. You get this periodic table every time, so it's not hard to tell. All right, so let's go back, take a look at some of the problems. The type of bonding to be able to determine what they are is piece of cake. All you have to do is remember this stuff. All right, so write these down. Hit pause, decide what kind of bonding is going on within each of these molecules and then we'll come back and, and see how you did. All right, hit pause. All right, you're back. After hitting pause, let's take a look. Okay, sodium is on the left. There it is, there's sodium. It's a metal. There's chlorine. It's a non-metal. Metal plus non-metal makes So that one's ionic bonding, clearly. Fe is iron. That's a metal. Oxygen is a non-metal. This is a transition metal, but it's still a metal. Metal plus non-metal makes ionic bonding. We're not asking you what are they. Just simply identify the type of bonding that's going on. Okay. Carbon is a non-metal. Let's take a look. It's clear that carbon is on the right side of the stair steps. Oxygen is also on the right side. So this is a non-metal. This is a non-metal. Non-metal plus non-metal equals covalent bonding. Okay, let's keep going. K is a metal. Phosphorus is a non-metal. Metal plus non, ionic bonding. Okay, we've gotten ones that are pretty simple. Let's take a look at this one. Hmm. K is a metal. It's a metal. Anytime you have metal, you've got to have ionic bonding present. But there's something else going on here. Remember whenever we looked at this and we said, well, what does that actually look like? Well, it looks like this. 3K plus 1s. This is one that we did on one of the other problems. Because those are the cation sides, right? And this is the anion side. Cation and anion. So what's on that anion side? 1 polyatomic ion. 
hopefully you remember that it's a minus 3, but that's not what's important. What's important is the fact that these PO4s stay all together for a reason. And the reason why is because P is a non-metal, O is a non-metal. So non plus non makes covalent, okay? So there's covalent here, but there's also ions involved. So the way we think about this is there's ionic bonding between the cations and the anions, but there's covalent bonding. So ionic bonding between ions, covalent bonding within the polyatomic. Let's see if I can move that up a little bit so you can see it. Okay. So ionic bonding is between the cations and the anions. There's covalent bonding within the polyatomic ion. So the answer here is what kind of bonding? Is both. Okay? Anytime you have ions, there's going to be ionic bonding. Hence, ion-ionic bonding. But you have to determine that if you have a polyatomic ion, for sure, within the polyatomic ion, there's going to be covalent bonding. Alright? So that also gets highlighted here. When you see this, I want you to see this in your head. And you have to remember that that's a polyatomic ion, that's a polyatomic ion, that's the cation, that's the anion. Within all of these, there's covalent bonding within. But hopefully you remember that the sulfite is a minus two, and the ammoniums are plus ones. So that's ionic bonding between the charged guys, the cation and the anion. So once again, this answer is both. Okay, so my suggestion is to go back to all the ions, and all, or all the compounds that you've looked at all the way through chapter three. Figure out what the charges are on everything. Be able to decide the kind of bonding that goes on in all of them. All right, so uh, good luck. Have at it.